Hello, cousins. Uh, before we get into the episode, I'd like to first ask for a small favor from you guys. Just a, a couple weeks ago, some of you might have heard that uh, our aunt and a few other family members got into a severe crash in Ethiopia. Um, she was actually visiting to uh, mourn her sister who she recently lost. Uh, and unfortunately, the crash left her in a coma and multiple other family members uh, with severe medical injuries that um, they're going to need help with. And we really want to bring her back as well. Uh, so my sister, Aisha Harun, you may know, has actually put together a GoFundMe to be able to raise enough funds to both help our family members and, inshallah, bring back our aunt. Uh, so we'll put the link in the description and, inshallah, just whatever you can do to help, please do so. And, um, yeah, so whatever you can do to help, please and thank you. And we'll get on to the episode. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Cousin Connection. Oh, oh, I went too early. I went too early. Sorry. My bad. Podcast. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah, yeah not the Cousin that. Podcast. Well, I, I don't know what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what thought. Y'all yeah, were the Cousin Podcast. My bad. Don't worry. I, I got your levels. I got your levels. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you know what? That makes it authentic to our show, though. Because exactly. we always mess exactly. it up. Exactly. So. Yeah. Look, Start you off fit on right a, in. Start off on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a professional. Don't worry. Exactly. I'm nervous, guys. I'm nervous. Nah, man. he's good. You should yeah. not be. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. <laughs> as you can see, we have another special guest. Or as you can hear, if you're listening. As you can hear. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. This is, I feel like, someone that we wanted on our show for a very long time. I think since we first started. Hey. Um... Or at least I did. I don't know about Amir. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> Sarah is the only one who reached out to me. I haven't heard anything from Amir <laughs> yet. Because so Sarah's been reaching no, no, constantly. No, no. I'm, just, I'm just a very, okay, like, Shada does that stuff. Okay, she's, you know, she's, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've delegated. She offered to me. Uh, exactly, you know? She, this is a team it. effort here, okay? She offered me lunch, Starbucks, <laughs> taking me to don't a comedy worry. show. Uh, I can tell that you used to do podcasts. You're looking at your levels. Yeah, no, right, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. That's yeah. okay, that's okay. That's totally not my okay. show, my bad, my don't bad. Don't worry, I'll keep watching the levels, man. If anything, I'll fix it afterwards in post. I actually not used to being on camera. That's why like, we have we used to, yeah, we had a podcast. Yeah, but we never made it to the. To we the should probably screen. get into that then, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So let's, let's introduce them. You introduce. Oh them. yeah, so we got Adil T. Should I say that full full name? Nah, no, we uh, always call him Adil T because there's like so many adults that we know. Yeah. So it's like you have the T. Like, wait, what's your Instagram name now? Honestly, I, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it. So let's. What not is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> Hold I on. haven't found my name yet. It's so probably going to change too. Yeah. <laughs> I got to switch it yeah, up. Yeah. Right now, I'm not. I'm not proud of that one. It's not my best one. I, come I, on. I, I come with some better stuff. How many times have you changed your name now? About at least five times. Five times <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't even know how to search you. Like, what's your? It's the uh, Ethiopian theology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, how do you say it? Ethiopian theology? I think it's theology. I don't know. I, I spelled a word that kind of rhymed with it. Ethiopian underscore theologian. That's yes. A, that's theologian. What I, mean. yeah, theologian. I don't know. I don't know what that, that means. Right yeah, now. but I just feel like that's what you know, bro. It was something else before this. I, it was a couple of things, man. I don't even know what theologian is, to be honest. Bro. You put that in your name, yeah. just so you know what it means? <laughs> I think it's like theories. I don't know, bro. What is it? Anybody can tell a me? A theologist? It? Yeah. That's yeah, well, that's what we'll go it. with. Okay. That's what we'll go with. All right, I got yeah, you. Yeah, we'll get into that, too. But uh, what he's referencing there is that he was also a... Uh, a member of the Loose Marto podcast. Yeah, shout the out. The precursor to, the gang. to us. Shout out yeah. to the gang. Shout out to the gang, man. Loose Marto walked so he could run. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> shout out to all of them, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no. It was, it, was, it was a fun ride, man. It was definitely yeah. an insta- inspiration for uh, us starting podcasts. Like, we were always talking about it. I was a then, huge fan. I don't know about you. Like, yeah, I, I listened, listened to every podcast. Yeah. You yeah, about? Were the first person that ever told me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 nah, it was, it was, look, it was, everybody mm-hmm. was free the pandemic yeah. we all got together i mean everybody has the idea let's start a podcast yeah. yeah literally the same origin story from everybody else yeah like we just we got together and it we had we had fun like we had fun like we came to have some conversations that were meaningful to us yeah. to the community try to get relationship talks it got yeah. spicy mm-hmm. you know what <laughs> I mean? words were said friendships ended <laughs> oh and God. here we are man this is where <laughs> we at now bro <laughs> no but the the podcast like i, I was definitely very entertaining and like yeah so it, so I guess we can go back to the beginning. You sort of mentioned it, but like, who did it start with? What was the motivation to start? 
I knew, did it start uh, pre COVID or was it during COVID? During COVID. It was during COVID. I yeah. thought it was pre. Yeah. Well, the, okay, so the idea was always there. Um, yeah. We should do this. And then, you know, by people were just busy, had their own lives. Yeah. It wasn't until COVID hit and everybody was literally forced to stay at home and yeah. like do nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's when I was like, yo, let's let's get together. And we were like in different states, like, you know, yeah. I got on the phone, yeah. had the um the app, and then we just started having conversations and that, that led to other things, you know. And your first podcast, I remember where it started in Ramadan, no? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember yeah, you guys yeah. had the first and you had like the Sheikh on and everything. Yeah, I remember and then that. they thought yeah, then they thought it was a Muslim podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then we went to relationships and they're like, Hold on, what's going on? This is not what we signed up for. Yeah, so. That's how you kept you you're working with different audiences. You got one one audience from the Muslims. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like politicians. We we're just trying to get it to <laughs> everybody exactly. that kind of you know what I mean we had something for everybody, man. Yeah. It, it, the team was very diverse. We had about mm-hmm. six or seven people yeah. that could speak on so many different things. People, you know what I mean, just different, you know, aspects. That's what life, I like man. because like there's us like i feel like we're we have of course there's a two of us we have sort of different perspectives but we did grow up together right yeah. Yeah. so our perspectives are very different when you have five different people like you're gonna have a lot more opinions mm. a lot yeah. more different ideas a lot more upbringing different upbringings depending on where they're from because um where were your all the hosts from how many hosts did you guys have Yeah, we did the opposite i i said who do i hate the most <laughs> who can i like fight with as much as possible yeah. and that was my approach the whole time like yeah. I, my, I was just there to argue with people like, yeah. you know what i mean so it was fun like the back and forth the chemistry so i just literally say look yeah i don't like this person i don't like this person this person we have a lot of back and forth shout out to you nah shout out to you, it's me you yo we were gonna mention names. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, it's all love it's all love you can tell we had that kind of chemistry yeah, that kind yeah. of camaraderie yeah. so you know, yeah. we just we always joked with each other and then mm-hmm. Yeah, because you did have pretty controversial opinions at some point. Oh, okay. it wasn't me, but I did. Um, I did. I did facilitate that, so I was guilty by definitely by association. Mm-hmm. I brought on people who had um very like you know what I mean. But that's what makes a good podcast, right? Yeah, when you I was have, just gonna say we got canceled by every auntie in the city. Right? <laughs> oh my to this god! Day, man, shout out to Sky Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Did they actually? Did they actually listen in? Yeah, they did, man. Now oh, I'm wow. visiting people. I'm still here, like get backlash to this day. Really? Like, yeah. Oh, you said this. No and way. You're talking about. Yeah, I literally on E Day. Like, yeah. I went to visit my aunts, and they were like, "Oh, so you think this about the parents and yeah. the moms?" And oh, I was yeah. like, "Why they said?" I was like, "Yo, it's not me, man. It's just the, the business, man. <laughs> yeah. It's entertainment. Like, you know, what I mean, it's just funny. I just like that. Like, people were like into it. Yeah, just it's all tongue in yeah. cheek, right? Like, they're not really. Nah, nah, nah. It was it. fun. Exactly. It was it was fun. Like, we was just joking around, but it was, yeah. it was just. Interesting to see how like the impact that I didn't. We didn't think it would go anywhere. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. There was just literally us having conversations, having fun with it. Yeah. How did y'all like start? How did y'all come about? I mean, what well, was your origin story? For us, it was literally like I just called her up one day. Well, we already um, had. Um, let's give me credit for. Okay, it. okay. You know, okay. then you tell the story. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ooh. Yeah, I will. See, yeah, one like... thing I learned about podcasts is how to uh, interact with the opposite gender, and I see that y'all <laughs> are yeah, y'all are working. Y'all figuring this out too. Yeah. <laughs> um. So originally, like, I hit him up. I think it was, like, in 2019. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, hey, Amir, like, I really want to start a podcast, but it I don't want to like do it alone. Yeah, uh, between, mm-hmm. between y'all two, I would say that Sarah definitely came up with mm-hmm. this one, yeah. And then he was like, no, I'm not into it. Sound like yeah. Samira. Yeah, Amir, Amir would do that, so, too. Yeah, Amir yeah, would definitely, like, yeah, you would definitely. You know, but I, I wasn't really comfortable with any uh, like i could have gotten any of my girlfriends to do it but i think that we think so alike that it's just going to be both of us like so here's the issue yeah we both agree okay yeah Case echo closed. chamber yeah, yeah echo you know chamber, yeah. so i was like i need someone who's like who i'm comfortable with but also has like completely different opinions mm-hmm. aka this guy <laughs> <laughs> um so dynamic when he said shows, yeah and he, show. he said no and it like crushed my soul and i was like all right I'm not gonna open that, like, you know. Well, like it was, it was again. a tentative. Yeah, defend no. yourself, yeah. Defend it was, yourself, it was yeah. a tentative. No, it was <laughs> I don't like, think so. let me, let me think this over. And like, I'm a very, you know, I like to really think over a project, and it may take a full year. Okay, yeah, it, it may take a full year for it to happen. <laughs> over yeah. a year, but, but it's literally see, when he invests, though, I could tell like he's all the way in. Yes, like, yeah, so that's what that's what it needed for me. Like, if I jumped in right away, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been a hundred percent all in. But in Fair. that one year, I could think about okay, concepts, mm-hmm. how to put it together, because I'm very like technical with that kind of stuff so mm-hmm. once i felt like i could execute perfectly and execute it properly that's yeah. when we started oh yeah yeah, yeah. i remind us yeah, of, yeah I, you see one side has to have the passion the other mm-hmm. side has to have the logistics you exactly. know what I, mean? so I could definitely see what is yeah. what going yeah. it kind of yeah. worked out in that way like i already like sort of was nerdy about this kind of stuff like i knew <laughs> how to set this all so up you're playing hard to get basically yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was like <laughs> but you know what it was though like when he said no covid started after that because this was 2019 yeah covid started and then um like towards the end of 2020 it was like the rise of clubhouse if you remember mm-hmm. he was oh, never yeah. on it though so yeah. what i did and i wasn't like 
using this as like, okay, one day I'm going to start a podcast. But I became super like, um, I had like such severe social anxiety throughout COVID that by the time we got to Clubhouse, I was like, I I don't know if you remember, but I would never speak in the rooms. I would just yeah, like sit there. Yeah, I do there. remember. Yeah, <laughs> I do, uh, very much. Yeah, like. I was just like the ghost that would just yeah. sit there and listen. And I just remember thinking like, how could I ever want to start a podcast if I'm not even comfortable like yeah. speaking mm. in front of people that I know, yeah. you know? And then by the time like 2021 came around, that's when Amir was like, all right. like No, didn't we start? We started in 2021? Yeah, it's only been a year. Oh, yeah, shoot. I yeah. Was like, yeah. <laughs> you, you came to F it up. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I remember like... So I was, it was like your training wheels. Sort no, of. it's like you being pushed in a pool. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> like, like we... Uh, Clubhouse is a totally like no, different like, game though. Yeah, okay, know? yeah. It's like a live podcast and you have like multiple voices and you know how all the conversations went mm-hmm. there. Um, and then when Amir said, okay, you know what? Like, I think we can do this. Let's let's just buy the equipment and, and get to it. And we literally started off with two mics and this. Yeah. Whatever That's funny called. because like you came with the idea and then it kind of shifted away to a mirror. Like, like, all right, let's go through with it. Yeah. Like, it's funny how like it's good dynamics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there. because the moment, the moment I made that decision and I told her mm. like, I'm, well, I, I had to, I, I knew that I had to execute right away and get <laughs> it started right away. Or then, you know, it kind of oh, well, falls yeah, off. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. So literally, I think that same week I bought all the equipment. Yeah. I, like set it up. I went to her house and we like just started recording. <laughs> yeah. So you knew this was gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. We, just, <laughs> we definitely sat on it for a we long time. We just like though. didn't know what to re- like. We were like, what do, what do we, what Say, do we talk yeah, about? That yeah. was always the hardest part. That was yeah. literally the hardest part for us. Like yeah. it seemed like we had a, so many topics to think about, but mm-hmm. when it comes to actually having a conversation, that's like, what I actually yeah. want to get into that a little bit. Yeah. Like um, when you're dealing, so when you have just two people, I feel like. Doing a podcast with two people is completely different than doing a podcast with like five or six people. Yeah, yeah, yeah like seven or eight. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. exactly. So, so uh, what were the, like the challenges that y'all had when you oh, were trying man. to, like, even just coordinate something like that? Accommodating different personalities and preferences, mm-hmm. and like everybody had their own. I mean, like they had their, like, I mean, interests, right? Mm-hmm. And then yeah. like it's, it, it was, it gets discouraging, right? Like somebody's yeah. really passionate about something, yeah, and they bring it to the group, and then like. Three or four people be like, mm, I really don't. I'm not interested. Yeah, in that, right. You think we have the flexibility to add like enough yeah. people for conversation, but mm-hmm. it's like moving as a unit. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I mean, like everybody's on page and feeding off each other's energies. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. the hard part, man. Like we had great people. Like I loved everybody that was on the team, mm-hmm. but like if you was on the same page, it, it could be like kind of discouraging. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? But when everybody was on the same page, like, yeah, it, it was lo- like it was beautiful. Like we loved, yeah. like we loved the energy everybody gave and contributed. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's just you know. I feel like there's still something there, honestly. Yeah, like maybe yeah, just yeah, time. Yeah. Reunion, we're gonna do a uh, reunion tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just saying, like, I feel like it's not, I'm not going to believe that it's yeah. 100% done. I still yeah. subscribe to you guys on uh, Spotify. <laughs> Me too. I'm shout waiting for, for that the, post to come out. Yeah, thank you for the shout out, man. Thank you for the promo. <laughs> We're Who's still going to link guys? them. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to link them anyways. Go back and listen to all their old episodes. Um, yeah, that was the hard part, just dealing mm-hmm. with people's personalities and stuff like that. And just, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, um, like, I don't know. It was just. It was, did it was, you uh, love, did you like podcasting? I did. I you did. did? I, I like stirring the pot. Yeah. I was mm. a pot stirrer. Like I, I, I mean, like mm-hmm. I like when people, when we got too serious or too, I just throw in a little something that just caught, you know what I mean? Just keep people yeah. on their toes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I just like, you know what I mean? Just, that was what I came in for. Yeah. Um, people didn't like that, but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But they, I mean, well, how about y'all? What is y'all favorite part as far as like having this conversation? What's the most meaningful part for, for you? Like, you know what I mean? What keeps y'all going? Um, Even oh, yeah, through the adversity. Yeah, you know I, I mean? feel like you have an answer. Huh? No, I was just going to say, like, I just like having these conversations out in the open and, like, mm-hmm. uh, hearing other people's opinions. Because you don't usually, when is the next, when is the, like, I know sometimes you have those nights where you might be with all your cousins and you're just talking about, like, when, you, when do you talk about, like, serious subjects? When do you really, like, break it down? You're just talking about, like, surface level stuff a lot of the time. But we really, we really like to, like, dive into, like, deeper topics depth, yeah. and get more in-depth. Yeah. And I feel like when you're on a platform like this, it kind of forces you to do that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And and you get more of the um, the 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 authentic, but not yeah, I guess authentic ideas, because some people might front or some people might just be not taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. But when you're on this kind of platform, people might take it a little more seriously and give you their real opinion oh, yeah. on the yeah, fact, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. Uh, when, that's it's, stru- I like when it. it's structured, people kind of weigh in and mm-hmm. they can take the conversation a little further. Yeah, yeah. that was a good part. Like having like structured conversations, people yeah. can jump in. And also, I like the fact that we can showcase 
like our culture to other people mm-hmm. uh like there are ideas that i have to do that a little bit more also like um yeah just the different aspects of us uh, or what do they call it it's um when you're part of different groups oh we always use this term but i always uh, forget i it. forgot the word Intersectionality. Yeah, inter- uh, yeah. That's what it is. Well, our intersectionality. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how it affects our thinking, mm-hmm. okay. and how we may think differently than people in, who are cer- mainly part of one group. And even though we're like mixed, like let's say we're black and we're Muslim, right? Mm-hmm. So the fact that we're Muslim also affects how we view ourselves in the black community, mm-hmm. and uh, how we view ourselves in the black community is different because. of our Muslim identity. So like how that works together, because if you get someone who's uh, mainly identifies just as black Mm. and nothing else, well, like of course people identify other things, but that's what they mainly identify as. Like it can be a very, I feel, I don't know if this is controversial. It can be a very like narrow idea of the world or you see the world in a very like, um, you have a smaller view, but when you're part of so many different, um, groups i guess you would say then you have a more like nuanced or n- wider view of the world is in a way if Inter- that makes sense intersexuality yeah intersectionality, intersectionality. <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah not sexuality yeah word Sexual- of the yeah. day guys yeah, yeah, <laughs> it gives you the ability to like think more outs- not yeah think more outside of the box and like mm. a- and uh be able to see the other side a little bit better yeah that's mm-hmm. a good one yeah actually that's, that's actually some good insight man well how yeah. about you what was the question again? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. I said, what it was... was what I'm already sweating, by the way, guys. Yeah, so, so am it's I. Going there. Can I feel my <laughs> we literally have the AC on in this room. Amir gave me pre-workout for the first time, <laughs> okay, guys. That's so. a confession. Oh, yeah. I might have yeah. given her some. I'm confession just, time. I'm yeah, this is... Like, I was, like, maniacally there. laughing as I gave it to her, too. <laughs> 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 I know. You were laughing a little too hard. I was like, I what are we I may have witnessed this drug transaction. I don't know. No, what keeps you going in this project or endeavor that i mean like what is the what brings you to joy um okay so like and when he we said intersexual intersectionality yeah so what's your yeah. i think for me like when we first started i always thought like we were already close mm-hmm. but i feel like this podcast really allowed us to get to know each other in such a different way like mm. we've we've had a lot of these conversations but it was always like very surface level it's like Mm-hmm. he'll spew like one thought i'll spew one thought and then we kind of just like trickle it out but like yeah like he said like the podcast has forced us to be so vulnerable and then like on camera too where literally anybody can hear it mm-hmm. um i think at first i was afraid of of doing that because for obvious reasons like why would you want to open up oh man you know yeah, it's terrifying <laughs> it's right terrifying, mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> um but once we did do it like when we talked about you know, our first episode where we talked about mental health and we talked about like hitting rock bottom or when we talked about like breakups and relationships, the response that you get, I didn't realize like the impact that we had. Like sometimes it still catches me off guard when people are like, oh my God, like I totally relate to this episode. And when mm-hmm. when we get that response and people open up to us and it can be like complete strangers or someone that we've known like our whole life and they're telling us, you know, whatever it is that they want to share, um, that connection that we make with people not to like play on our name but you know that connection that we make with that's people that's not what you yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think that's what keeps me going and and even like whenever we're talking about topic ideas and we're like is this too controversial like mm-hmm. should we bring this up we're like no let's let's do it because if we're thinking about it i'm sure other people are too right so um we always ask for topic suggestions too just because you want to talk about obviously like what interests us but if there's a topic that someone suggests and we're like oh you know what like i never thought of that let's let's cover that topic um we're always open to it so mm-hmm. i think that's what yeah in the comments yeah, i know yeah. right <laughs> yeah that pre-workout's really hitting you there <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm dying right now. here you can I grab that tissue box over there yeah right <laughs> i don't think i'm sweating but my face just feels really hot amir I think it's a pre-workout. I think real. it's the vulnerability that's happening right now. You think so? Yeah, Am I like, getting yeah, nervous yeah, now? Yeah, vulnerable, <laughs> yeah, vulnerable. Can you actually get me a tissue though? I'm kind of <laughs> <sorry. laughs> So I wanted to, uh, I'm, I'm always interested in like hearing about other people's upbringings because like I feel like the upbringing, upbringing in Atlanta or just in America in general, in my eyes at least, is very different than our upbringing here. I don't know if you, I don't know if you agree with that, but I want to see so like, essentially what just so something give you give you something to bounce off of so for us like we all grew up very tight-knit and close together 
So when I say that in a literal sense, where we were in the same building, we saw each other every single day, all our mothers hanged out, hung out together. But I felt every time I go to Atlanta, I always felt like it was so like rural and like sparse. Do you do you feel like that's what your upbringing felt like? Nah, um, I don't know. Or like, did you guys yeah. have a very similar upbringing? Based off what you said, it yeah. sounds like it's very similar. You Is it really? I mean? Yeah, it sounds like it's very, very, we were very close-knit. Yeah. We were very raised in a community center, um, mm -hmm. holding on to religion, holding on to, um, I guess, traditions and yeah. culture, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I mean, I, I think we kind of had, I mean, I, I don't know mm -hmm. if everybody had that same experience, but yeah. I could speak for myself and say that we, we definitely was close-knit. We're definitely yeah. raised together. I don't, I don't know if it shows to this day because mm -hmm. we <laughs> can't speak the language. You know I mean? Well, no, nah, y'all rolled yeah. deep. Like when I was at that way, y'all were like... Yeah, but mm -hmm. I don't know how much we have to show, but I think that um, we still have that, that, um, that respect for, yeah. for, for, you know, for the culture and yeah. that love for it. And even though people do like go away from it, they mm -hmm. come back, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When they realize they want to raise their kids and their family yeah. or want to identify with something... Mm -hmm. um, they always come back. So yeah, and yeah. The, I guess the thing that kind of sparked that question, like from an outsider's view, because like I'm 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 only seeing from the outside, right? Is that like in Canada at least we don't we've we've assimilated somewhat to the Canadian culture, and that like you know we <laughs> okay, <laughs> dumb. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna cut that out. No, okay, we've assimilated to the culture here, like. In a way, you know, we, we, we do consider ourselves Canadian in some senses. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in America, like the assimilation is a lot more apparent than it is here. Where like it comes down to, I don't know, even simple things like the gun culture. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't know, a lot more Hutteries are into that kind of thing. Um, the, uh, the way, just the way you guys act in a sense is very... American, my idea of what American is like, almost like African American, if that makes sense. This is a very ignorant view. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm, saying that right now. I'm yeah. really waiting for you to finish your thought. This is a very yeah. ignorant view, but <laughs> I feel I feel like the assimilation has has ha, is more in place in the Hari community in America than it is here. Do you guys yeah. agree or no? She's scared to agree, but I, I know what you're saying. You I, know what I, I'm I, saying, <laughs> right? No, I, I know. I know what hey, he's trying to say. We have to have these conversations, okay? I if I if I'm ignorant in this, so call me out for it, okay? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying this is what I believe or what I've seen, I think, and I just wanted like clarification on that. So, do you feel like Americans, American Haredi people, or American East Africans in general have assimilated more in America? Right, you're you're talking just to clarify. You're talking about like first generation, first right? generation, not, exactly. Not the parents, but like yeah. The, yeah. their offspring honestly <laughs> even some of the parents okay all right, <laughs> yeah, right he's, he's calling all y'all nobody's safe yeah right? nobody's safe bro. yeah that's a tough one i gotta go back to america <laughs> i don't know yeah, I, gotta, I don't know that's a tough, i don't know <laughs> i think i think yeah. because we're looking at it from from this side yeah and he's on the other side right yeah like yeah. i'm gonna help you polish Understand. that thought okay you know because I, I get what you mean. Yeah. First question is, do you want to be Canadian? <laughs> what? Is that, a, is that a thing? Do y'all want to be Canadian? I feel like y'all were, Listen, we're held on to a tradition because there's no other alternative to that. Like We're putting this online, okay? We're not trying to get, like, we can't get deported, <laughs> but, you know? <laughs> we're not trying to no, have but I do. I, even, I, even, I, have, I had this conversation with my own boss, like, the guy who oh. owns our company. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, do I identify more? Because he's Italian, mm. but he's also half, like, Newfie, which is uh, new, from Newfoundland. Yeah. So he, he kind of already had some connection here. But I said, like, if you were full Italian, would you uh, identify more with your Italian roots than your Canadian ones? You know what it is? Yeah. I think Canada celebrates everyone's differences. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it definitely celebrates the yeah. difference, especially in Toronto specifically. Yeah. Like, we're lucky to be here and not yeah. in the... Like, Canada has racist parts. Like, let's be yeah. real. It does. But um, because diversity and multiculturalism is so celebrated here... Mm -hmm we have the freedom to be like, yeah, I'm Canadian, but I'm also Haredi, I'm also yeah. black, Ethiopian, whatever you want to yeah. box yourself in. But with America, I just feel like you guys are a little like patriotic a little bit. That's you know? funny. Because mm -hmm. I don't America, know land of the free, you know? That's what I was trying to get at. I don't know anybody who says they're, who claims to be American or who's proud, like who will take the American identity mm -hmm. over their Ethiopian or w whatever they are. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what you I mean? I don't think anybody would, would take that. Over. I mean, like they're very proud to be who they are. Yeah. I don't think they want to be American. But so the oh. question is, we got him. <laughs> okay. So I, I mean, like, it's a tough <laughs> spot. On, yeah, it's a tough spot I'm in, right? But did we assimilate more? I think we did. 
I yeah. think we uh, un, unintentionally, unavailingly, mm. I think we did. Mm-hmm. The result was that we did become more American, mm-hmm. whether we wanted to or didn't. Yeah. Do you feel and like it's, it's because diversity and multiculturalism isn't as celebrated in the States? I th- yeah, like I said, I guess I guess mm-hmm. it's it was cool to be a certain way growing mm-hmm. up, and that way happened to be the American lifestyle. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get. I, I don't know if I if I'm being real. If I'm being but honest, yeah. right? You know? Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, like maybe it's because it's almost like the grass is greener kind of thing. Like you don't notice that it's happening in your side of the fence yeah. because you're yeah. always looking at the other side. Yeah. But it probably if someone was looking at it from like looking into Canada, they would probably have a similar opinion or a similar idea. Like, oh, we're a lot more um, Canadian in a sense. Because we don't know. Like, for me, it's very apparent when I, someone is American. Like, I can tell just from the mannerisms, from the way you guys move, from the way you talk. Really? They're not all the same. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> not all the same. Like, it, it, to give you an example, like when I went I to the wedding, yeah. like to give you an example, when I went to the wedding, like I could tell they were American just from the way they talked, the way they acted. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're more forward. They're more um, it's a expressive. Right? Yeah, definitely different, like demeanor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, could, I could see, I could see mm-hmm. what you're saying. I could see what you're saying. But I feel like maybe someone from outside, from America, would have a similar. Oh yeah, idea. Def- yeah, definitely, definitely. I was looking at a group of Canadians, mm-hmm. like no, really? you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, like you could tell, like these are not. A, mm-hmm. I mean, like, what's the key difference though? Like, how do you know? Um, it has to be the way. Uh, if we're a certain way that yeah. we like, we act or like more. I don't know what's the word. Like I, we we move around. I don't like, I, like, yeah. <laughs> like y'all are more uh, stagnant. I don't know, bro. Like I, I can't speak. Like, y'all are like. Uh, do you feel like we're more passive? Like we're kind of yeah, just to ourselves. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Y'all are more. I was mm. introverted. In I a way, so, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no okay. Look, man, there's no. Yeah, I'm back in the don't, corner. Don't try and nice <laughs> it up. Okay, don't nice it up. In the corner. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, say, st- say it straight up. This is where we have real conversation. He feels the same. Okay. You know that, right? Like okay. he has the exact same thought. Yeah. So exactly yeah. what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He literally said that like two weeks ago. So what? The 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 idea that Americans are more maybe like forward. They're mm-hmm. more outgoing. They're yeah, more we're more like. Um, subdued yeah, a little miskeen, bit just like, not <laughs> we're not <laughs> no, we're not miskeen, we're not miskeen, we're not miskeen. I mean some of us are some of us are yeah <laughs> speak for yourself yeah. shoot <laughs> yeah I don't know man I don't know that's, that's a tough one that's mm-hmm. a tough one that's a tough that's interesting I, I, I mean you got me thinking though you definitely mm-hmm. got me thinking yeah. on it yeah you yeah. know when you notice these differences mm-hmm. when, when we're all together like mm-hmm. Koba or mm-hmm. like those types of events I think yeah. that's what it is because yeah because when yeah. I was in America the world events for Koba yeah. <laughs> when the world <laughs> comes together yeah. when we were in Atlanta you mean uh, yeah when we were in Atlanta for Koba mm-hmm. like maybe it was the things that we did because like in Canada, we would never go out and shoot guns. Like I never shot guns, but like they, they had guns, and I was seeing them for the first time. Mm. Or like we never—I don't even know if I should talk about this kind of stuff. Should <laughs> I'm get myself in trouble? <laughs> we'll say it, and if we we're like, nah, let's cut uh, that. Out. Like, like we wouldn't like hang out at someone's house all night and like smoke cigars and like do shisha <laughs> and stuff like that. Damn, what kind of you seen in America? And like and like have a barbecue in <laughs> the back do overnight. That. But they did it like ev- maybe you know what? Maybe my view is skewed because every time I went to America, it was mm. for an event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people want to show out for events, right? So they'll they'll do all the things that you traditionally wouldn't do in Canada like on a day to day. You know what though? What? Think about all the times that people came Okay, Toronto, I feel like is like the Everyone comes here. Yeah. Whether it's a wedding, kubba, whatever the yeah. reason is, people come here. Yeah. We may not come over to someone's house to smoke, but we take them to oh, all yeah, the yeah, smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those yeah. are the those are the like cultural differences, I guess. Like where they would have a, they would all go to. So that's maybe one big thing. A difference is that if you came to Toronto, mm. you're not all going to someone's. Maybe every once in a while you might go to someone's house. Yeah. But you'll most likely go out to a restaurant. You'll go out to get food. You might go downtown or something like that. But if you go to America, for the, or at least Atlanta specifically, mm. we'll just all go to someone's house. And you just <laughs> hang out there literally until the morning. Yes, yeah, it's, it's subtle differences. Like no one's yeah. sleeping. Yeah, so subtle, like yeah. those are just the differences that I noticed. So it's less about... It, it, I think we've all assimilated in a way. It's just like how we... Um, I don't, I don't know how we how we our, how our culture is very different. I don't know. I'm trying to put it thing. into words. Yeah, it's yeah. not even a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad no, thing. No, no, I, no. I get it. But regardless of how we assimilated, what mm-hmm. what do you think is our current state though? Like as far as I mean, why you, is that a tough one? Is that a hot, hot? Our current state as a community? Yeah, just like identity wise, culture wise. You know what I mean? Just I feel like there's ebbs and flows to it. Mm. If that makes sense. Can you expand on that? So like I feel like 
there are times where like the the sense of our community and culture is really strong and then it'll slowly like die out i'm not really sure why it dies out maybe it's because like the generation that was part of it has gotten busy with work or whatever but now the second generation is all having their kids and stuff uh, their kids and so i say stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're having their kids Pets and i feel like yeah. <laughs> but I, I feel like they'll want to give their kids that same upbringing that they had mm -hmm. so now there's gonna be a resurgence of people trying to give their kids uh those i don't know those uh cultural events that we used to have or like going to people's houses and like practicing certain traditions we used to do just so they have that to carry on to the next generation because there's a lot more, i'm seeing a lot more kids running around now you're seeing a lot oh, yeah. more kids on the ig we're at that age where you're seeing everybody oh, yeah. having kids to, out here i go to community events so i don't recognize who they <laughs> See? Are. there's a whole bunch of new kids i've never seen before yeah and like and the community is getting bigger and it's mm. getting different yeah I mean, I feel like there needs to be like a renaissance or something. Like you need to go back to like yeah. you know how it was before. We had a renaissance in the early two thousands. Yeah, we, we need all, another one though. That's how long yeah. ago is that? You know yeah, I mean? yeah. And that actually goes into our uh, next thing that I wanted to talk about. So we haven't had Koba for how many years now? I so don't for uh, just for anyone's reference, Koba is basically like. Um, means soccer i think we've mentioned it before it means soccer it's an event where they'll have a soccer tournament but essentially like all the hutteries in north america would come together to this one city it could be don't like, exclude the europeans and the <laughs> oh yeah the <laughs> europeans <laughs> sorry <laughs> the europeans and even some people from ethiopia I don't know, sometimes yeah, yeah. um would come to this event in a specific city like they'll choose like around the cities where a lot of hutteries are so it may be in like dc atlanta toronto uh, a couple times in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. in other places. And we'd all just have that tournament, but it would be a kind of way of kind of getting together as a community. I mean, if you ask any of the parents, they, mm -hmm. they'll they be very open and frank with... Yeah, the, the reason that it was made... Was to set people up. Yeah. Set people out, like how? Like, so like, that we can meet, and right. then like you start dating each other. And like, yeah. how many marriages have come the out of The underlying Koba? goal of Koba was to yeah, get yeah. hutteries <laughs> to marry each other. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Like, do you guys feel that with the lack of Koba, like this has really just affected the Absolutely. ability okay. to date yeah. hutteries within the community? Yeah. Because I think, I mean, yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, the world is a lot smaller than we think. And yeah. I think, you know, 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. I feel like um, we didn't always know, like, like, sorry to pick on the Australians, but mm -hmm. I didn't know a single one like 10 years ago. Yeah. Maybe not. You know, 10 years ago or so, I had no idea there were even hutteries on that side of the world. You know? <laughs> I couldn't, yeah, if you give me a map, I couldn't even point to where it was at. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, I feel like, you know, a couple years later, they all just kind of started popping up on yeah. Instagram and you're like, who are these people? Yeah. And then they started coming like to this side of the world. We mm -hmm. started going there. And then before you know it, we're all like, interconnected mm -hmm. same thing with like hararis in ethiopia hararis in um where else are they europe you mm -hmm. know wherever they are can't forget them exactly. yeah like we're Twice. all <laughs> 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 we're all like super connected so i think the fact that there was no kuba yeah maybe like inspired people to travel more mm -hmm. and connect with with Ooh, people more that's, and that's a good take yeah that's a good the take internet on, yeah. also makes the world even smaller like one simple follow and yeah you can become friends with someone date somebody you know slide in the dms i don't know yeah. so how do you how do you feel about that um i think no because it was on a decline anyway really like, it people, was yeah, people weren't really going showing up mm -hmm. i think what did more for people were probably um other events mm -hmm. like shout out to hpn mm -hmm. kind of best like oh that. yeah definitely and really weddings as long as it's weddings mm -hmm. i think there's always going to be hope <laughs> that's um, true. you yeah. always meet somebody new that you never met before that's true mm -hmm. and uh, there's always going to be something going on right and i think the best way to meet somebody is just not even plan it bro like you, it's not like you just happen mm -hmm. to go somewhere mm -hmm. and meet somebody and become really cool with them yeah so even if there is a cool but like what was the success, uh, success rate on that right mm -hmm. like, I, mean, I mean do you feel oh go ahead i was just gonna say like do you think if it was to make a comeback in Toronto, for example, because there were rumors for the last like two years that it was going to happen, mm -hmm. um, but it never did. But do you think it would have been like because it hasn't been here for so long that yeah. everyone would have came just to kind of see and scope out the scene? I think it was probably the best location to do it. I think mm. Toronto has the best uh, potential. Um, it'll just come down to the marketing. And potentially means women. 
yeah. <laughs> on record now. So I played. I played. Um, yeah, I just it just depends on who takes care of it, who runs the show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think it, it could. It has a lot. Of, I, w- I would love to see it. I would support it. But mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, I was gonna I say like, do we even need Kuba yeah, anymore? Do we? Right. I mean, what would you guys want to see? I feel like the Kuba itself has evolved like we we started sort of like wiki like you mentioned with hpn mm-hmm. hpn was like uh, a highly professionals network that uh we put together or i would i don't take credit for it yeah. it was a, i help i helped so but uh who uh, sorry one of the founders was rania uh, rania, 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 rania put people, it together yeah. mm-hmm. and um it was essentially just a way that a lot of professionals could get together and we had like a whole banquet for it and it 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 really helped get a lot of people together in the community and we could it could showcase a lot of the people who uh were making big moves in the Hutterie community that we might not have known of um and yeah that was sort of like it had a very kubba feel in that you were seeing people from around the world mm-hmm. or how do people from around the world that you wouldn't normally see honestly i think we're so disconnected that we gotta get back to just talking mm-hmm. not, not yeah. even talking like today just talking to be like hey like you know we're, yeah. we're the same you know we're, yeah. we're together we're one right. you know what i mean we got to get back to the social events and then hopefully, I don't know, maybe we could work our way back up there. But I don't yeah. th- I think we're so far from, oh, how, how can we get people hooked up? And it's like, mm-hmm. this is, I don't know, it's just disparities is too much right now, in my opinion. For yeah. what I've seen, because mm-hmm. people do come and we're like, hey, we should do this event. Let's get them together. I'm like, I'm, if I'm being honest, I don't think people will show up. I'm just mm-hmm. being honest. Like, I've seen a uh, lot. Right? I think you'd be surprised. Yeah, you'd be surprised. There'll be some that are very eager. Yeah. Um, but overall... I I'm, I like to be real. I like to be honest. Mm-hmm. I, my opinion mm. is that I don't think it would be as accepted or welcomed as people would like it to yeah. be. You know what I mean? I think it, it would take a lot of work to get to the point where people are hoping and, you know, want to see it at, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I mean, I think the, like, you kind of have to, like, before you start organizing this event, like, maybe just, like, do, like, a general, like, not a survey, but, you know, social media is our best friend at this point. So, mm-hmm throw out like a poll on Instagram or something on one of those like Harari pages um, and see how people are feeling. And I, I, I maybe I'm, this is me just being hopeful, but I really believe that like people want an event like this. I don't mm-hmm. know. Event like as far as like meeting like, people to like get. I mean, I think I, I don't think you should market it as like a come one, come no, on. I do. Like Harari yeah. matchmaking, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, like with with COVID and everything. Mm. I think we were talking about it in the car. Like people were cooped up for two years. Yeah. yeah. So now people are itching for something to do, like for mm-hmm. some, for just a reason to yeah. go out yeah. and meet people or just yeah. be in a group of people in general. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we put something together. Like, yeah, people would be willing to do it just because it's been so long. Like some of them probably haven't interacted with their community in such a long time. That's oh, yeah. true. Because I definitely believe that COVID killed a lot of communities. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Well, if you if you could organize any event. Mm-hmm. <laughs> first time in a long time people come together mm-hmm. what, yeah. event, what event would you throw I would always it would always come back to like a cultural event or something something I'll be, I'll be excited for that that people can get out get something out of it mm-hmm. like even if they um, I don't, like like oh, an example would be like the Chalanko event we did where that's like very cultural though like that's your purpose is to learn about a, a specific yeah, historical like, th- event yeah there's a goal to it where yeah. people can learn something yeah but then you can also have like some entertainment and stuff and things that you can put together like mm-hmm. because a lot of people they might not go because they're like oh what am I going to do there what is it for that kind of thing but if mm-hmm. you have a goal you have like a specific thing that they can point to to be like oh I'm going there to do this yeah like it'll give people more of a motivation to actually go and do it because I feel like a lot of people are interested in learning more about their culture no yeah, yeah. I-, I-, I would be more yeah i'm at that point where like all right i want to learn more about my my mom yeah who i am yeah i mean maybe like do you guys remember harari day every year Mm -hmm. whatever city it was in would always have like a theme Mm. so like maybe we should just eliminate the the sports part of kubba oh he's sweating he's sweating (laughs) (laughs) like Like, some hot topics yeah yeah, i I mean like eliminate the sport part of it because like although it's fun and it gets the kids moving and whatnot like that was for the dads yeah, like who really that watches? That was for all the boys. Yeah. yeah, I guarantee you, if there's no sports, the boys would not. Yeah, all the guys would not show up. Maybe or. turn it to what would I guess? What would basketball be in Gay <laughs> Oh shoot! <laughs> I don't know. If, if they made Didn't it, if they, they, they made it that, basketball, though? what? Didn't they? Do well, that? like yeah, it was part of it, but like if it was a main part of it, I feel like because now we've kind of shifted from soccer to basketball in a way. Like right. a lot of our youth are into more into basketball more. Facts. So if that was the main thing, I feel like it. would drive a lot of people or to come out 
You think so? Yeah, definitely. Wait, wait, so your your thing is the cultural show or the well i was just gonna day? say like because you were saying like what type of event mm-hmm. should we do and i was saying maybe we should just eliminate the sports altogether and focus on doing like the harari day type of that's fine i would do that complete mm-hmm. opposite that's so funny really? that, i mean I, I, I just i know i just said i would like to yeah. learn, but if i had to choose one yeah i just want something for everybody to come out and just have fun like sports right sports. so like so a I big would, ass barbecue yeah. big barbecue big mm-hmm. sports Ten, event, a basketball volleyball, tournament yeah. it could be yeah, it could be basketball and volleyball something for yeah. everybody right you know what i mean you know what? I don't know who's listening to this. I don't know if my dad's age, th- that group Oh, they're of listening because mm-hmm. that. I'll, t- I'll try to tell you. <laughs> yeah, they listen. I'll try to tell I'm you. I'm just bro. saying, like, if they, if if that, I can't remember what the acronym was, but that organization that does Kuba every yeah. year, like, if they're really trying to revive it for the next year and the years to come, yeah, maybe you should recruit some people in the first generation. How do we? Because here's the thing. I think our parents have a certain mentality and they think like, here's one thing that I've noticed. Oh no. If, I don't know what you guys were thinking this whole time. Actually, I was thinking like <laughs> it wouldn't be the parents organizing well, yeah, all this. Be, yeah. yeah but, but I'm saying like, if it, what I'm saying is they need to kind of like loosen their grip on it. Right. I don't they, think they should be involved at all. <laughs> so you want, like in that motion. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. want like people our age to do it. Yeah, We're old think, enough now. Think, we, uh, we are the like, I don't, I don't think the age. community would come together until mm-hmm. people are like, y'all yeah. start running. I love how I you mean, said y'all. What about yeah. you? Yeah. 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 What about you? Support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> start that's running the, it. But that's the issue though. The issue is that people will always support you. That the support is not the issue. It's who's willing to actually like put in that labor, the money, like the time, mm-hmm. the effort, like, you know, it's not, you know, we were in HYC together. Yeah. We, we did a Harari Youth Committee together with Hassan and a bunch of other people in Toronto. It's mm-hmm. not easy. Like you're at, at some point, sometimes you feel like you're like begging people to, to not just support because support will always be mm-hmm. there. But to like help Take and like yeah. exactly because that's it's always not, been a struggle with everything. That's been a struggle yeah. with a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. That's you, been like I think our downfall as far as like yeah. initiative. We have lost leadership. a lot of initiative as a community. Yeah. Leadership is not our strong quality. <laughs> man. That's why we are the smallest group in terms of <laughs> <laughs> I think that like if we genuinely like want to see some kind of change, like someone has to be the one that like says, "All right, you know what? Yeah, like I hear you guys. Let's let's do this together." I need like fifty of y'all to. I think yeah, I mm-hmm. think that kills me the most, man. I think we have so much potential to do so much, like amazing. We have people, personalities, mm-hmm. yeah, networks, you t- everything we need, right? We yeah. have well, like, resources, all that stuff. And right? even if even if you do have like a leader, unfortunately, I do feel that like in the community, there's a lot of naysayers mm-hmm. who will demotivate certain, indi- oh, yeah. certain individuals. You gotta, you gotta be Obama. Things. You gotta be perfect. I don't think yeah. like our generation really gets impacted by naysayers. We don't care. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny though? From my it experience, can get yeah. my experience, the people who are probably outcasted the most in the community are the ones who step up and like, yeah, because they're already conditioned in the way of like, I don't care what you're gonna say about me. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they come back and like really run the show and mm-hmm. they do a yeah. lot of great. You know, mm-hmm. they do a lot of good things. I I seen it from my own eyes. Yeah, you know what I mean, because they don't like it, it takes that kind of person that like I don't exactly. care what you're gonna say. Like you don't whatever. I'm not trying mm-hmm. to impress nobody. I care about these kids. I yeah. care about community right right so you gotta i think we don't a lot of us don't have those kind of qualities naturally i think i don't know I, that's that's a, that's a tough one but I, I, yeah I, I can i can sort of see that we're like yeah and, and also we have we live in a i don't know i live in a society we live in a time mm-hmm. where like you have to really be hustling to like just survive out here these days yeah and back in the day like you know inflation wasn't as bad like the cost of living wasn't as bad so you had more time to kind of focus on other things like building your community i don't think inflation is the cause of it i just think okay let me tell you what was one of our biggest struggles Mm yeah was that people would they were scared to come and talk because they were like how would people listen and and Mm -hmm. perceive me as this nobody wants to put themselves out there yeah so that was been a crippling effect for us that's the naysayers i was talking about oh yeah yeah. and so i mean but it's scary that's that's a problem when you're scared to open up and talk because you're scared who might listen to it Mm -hmm. and how they might tell your parents about this and you can't even have an honest conversation that's the problem that's not a you know what i do though like even when we talk about semi-controversial things on this i i play it to my parents i'm like listen to this guys Mm -hmm. because that way I'm showing my parents what we spoke about. And if anyone has anything to say, they can just be like, yeah, I know my daughter showed it to me. And yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I, I think 
if we let the fear of what other people are going to say stop us, then we'll never start. And and yeah. we'll just slowly disintegrate. And, and unfortunately, but unfortunately in this community, that's where we're at. Man. Yeah, we're like in a point where a lot of people say a lot of things. Like, yeah. I think that's a, I, I don't want to, it's very controversial, okay? But I, I do feel here. like gossiping mm-hmm. is, is a big issue. Gossiping is a big issue within, in every community. Yeah, though. within a, every community, but like, it can be really demotivating for a lot of people, right? When you when you hear that, when people just come up, there are people who literally I've heard, like from my old friends, that like people who are trying to put things together, where in the middle of the event, someone will come up to them and be like, "This is trash. This is horrible," and just walk away. And like you know oh, what wow. you say? Like, "There's the door. You're not forced to but be it, here." I'm you sorry. Can, you can but... hear it a few times, but then when you hear it so many times, like it's just like, "Why am I even trying?" Right? So, oh, but yeah. you're not yeah, doing you it for that. Yeah, honestly. It, it, you get to that point. Though. You do get to that point. Yeah, though. like you I, get I that get like that. it's almost like telling people online who make make like online content, like, mm-hmm. oh, don't listen to the comments. They're just like, and if it was like, eventually well, it gets I know. to you. I, I know because I like sometimes we get comments, it, yeah. and yeah. I, yeah. I, you know what I do? I read it and I'm like, should I cuss this person out? Nah, I'm just gonna delete it. And See? then yeah. the so we need good. you to lead seminars on how to <laughs> <laughs> how to deal with this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not everybody's built that way, right? Some people are affected by those things. I know because I remember the days when your sister would tell me start a YouTube channel and I was like, I can't, like, I don't have thick skin. I would die if I started uh, yeah. YouTube. And now look at us. Mm-hmm. I think crazy, it just, yeah, crazy. That's it just happens crazy. over time. Like you kind of, I think you reach a point where you're like, am I just going to let the fear of what people are going to say stop me from living or mm-hmm. am I just going to say F it and go? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that you overcame it, but until we overcome as like a, as a, a whole, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. then we would not really live to our potential. Because we have so many things that we could be doing, I mm-hmm. know. that I would be excited for. Yeah, if yeah. it wasn't those, you know, what I mean, those issues. It's just, I mean, like you want to have a conversation. You can't even have a, a conversation without somebody saying, "Oh, I don't want to put myself out there." That's because so I, true. You know I, mean? I, I don't know, you know, the, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Like you know what I mean. I think that's what we're trying to like, kind of defeat, not defeat, but overcome with even this podcast alone, right? Like I don't really. But then again, I don't listen to people in general, so yeah, like yeah. I don't really care no what I say. No like there, you, 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 even on this podcast, I've kind of like hesitated, but then I'll just say straight up what I'm thinking yeah. because at this point, like I think it should all be out in the open, mm-hmm. and then have a conversation about it. And if someone has an opposite opinion of me, okay, that's good. We don't we don't, we don't all have to agree on everything. That's you true. Know? I'm just saying it's like, but don't but but when we're trying to build something, don't come out of the woodworks and be and and try to tear it down, right? Like yeah. if you don't agree with us. Do your own thing. Yeah. Go away. Let us let us do what we want. <laughs> yeah, to, right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you yeah. think you can do it better, do it. Yeah. If you don't, then get out the way. Yeah. I think sometimes people are just quick to criticize. Like, they'll, they'll never be the ones that'll, like, lead the charge. Yeah. But when they watch someone else do it, they're like, oh, they're doing it all wrong. Like, yeah. That's not yeah. how you do it. Yeah. And, and those, are, those, you, are you offer them. those There's a term for that. That's like <laughs> side side arm i forgot i, I know i know yeah, which, I, what you're yeah, talking about uh it basically you're sitting down couch something yeah. uh shoot it's gonna bother it, me now is it yeah. like the equivalent to like a backseat driver mm, yeah, yeah but it's like you, you you yeah I don't know. I it's like a coach from the couch or something like yeah, that something shoot, like forget that, the word yeah. yeah coach from the yeah. couch yeah, no, basically you're just sitting and, and watching people literally what you just mm-hmm. said also, i don't know why that that phrase <laughs> stuck in my head armchair He's there. He's halfway there. He's halfway there. He's halfway there. He's halfway there. Yeah. Armchair. Armchair activism or something like that. Oh, maybe that is what it is. I don't. I, There's someone listening to you like, oh, is this this? Is yeah, they usually they blood. usually pull through and they'll like comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. If you guys know, let us know. But mm, on yeah. that note, we're gonna take a really quick break. We took a lot of time thinking about this. Yeah. So. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh yeah, we yeah we actually do have to take a break real quick. Yeah. Real quick. We will be back. Well, no, but I want to get back to you. Because there's another aspect of you we haven't covered yet. Oh yeah, which is your you, you're you're an artist, okay? Oh no, yeah, <laughs> multifaceted, <laughs> yeah, multi-talented. You are an artist, okay? Nothing ready for that, man. Y'all got to get me back on another one for that. I probably <laughs> I, I actually completely forgot about that. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> no, I think no, we no. just we just want to talk about it. Exactly. You, you don't got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, not, yeah. oh wait, did you start recording it. on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you did. Okay, completely okay. forgot about that, man. No, but like you've actually like you you've written a lot of good. I guess you call it spoken word. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. Man. So when did that start? That was just a hobby that I just really enjoy doing. Like yeah. I just love like it was a challenge mm-hmm. that kind of got me like I just I, I didn't want to be a rapper, but I, <laughs> I liked like putting words together and mm-hmm. making them rhyme. Like I love doing that. Like mm-hmm. that was just uh, I don't know. It was just fun to me. It was, you know what I mean? When like, did you start doing it? I don't know, man. Since I was like twelve years old, bro. oh like, wow, yeah, honestly, like, cause it started off as like when you were your friends, like kind of yeah. like in freestyle, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, so you yeah. would just write, you would write it down, and 
I don't know. I, I always felt like I had, um, it came easy to me. Yeah. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't, and the people that was around me kind of like were really receptive to it. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is, this is actually pretty good, right? Yeah. So I was just one of those things, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just something I, it's a passion, man. It's like it's something I, I, so I wish I could make money off doing that, right? Like, I would do that. Honestly, yeah. that's what I wanted to get into because I feel like it's something, especially nowadays, that you can yeah. really like ah, man. produce and make into something that, you you can put on all platforms like people yeah. will listen to it and mm-hmm. watch it. Yeah, I and didn't put I didn't put them up to this. They, it's on their own free will. They <laughs> no, brought this up. Saying, I didn't even yeah. know they're gonna bring this up, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I feel <laughs> like I was like, okay, this is like really good. <laughs> Honestly, when when you when you're doing that, like I was, I think it was black and white one you were doing. I was yeah. like, I can picture you doing this, like. On, on like the side of a street, so you got a <laughs> camera on you, fish eye lens, you know, I w- I wanna, black and I wanna, white. I want to invest more into it though. I haven't really like recorded yeah. nothing. Like I, those yeah. are just like small video. I want to like really. Well, like for I you, look into it, man. I feel like it's very for that type of uh, art. I guess you could say like it's very simple setup because you're only only using your voice, right? Yeah. And yeah. if you want to record, you get a camera, or you can like record on a mic or something. Uh, and put it up on like all like TikTok, YouTube, and everything. And people really gravitate to us that kind of stuff, especially yeah. if it's relevant to. I, I think one of your pieces was relevant to something that was going on at the time. I forget. It was a black and white one. Shoot, why am I forgetting it right <laughs> no, now? I think all of them are black and white. No, no. The videos yeah, that he's are they all black and white? A lot of them are, but like, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah there's whatever. When something's going on, like, yeah. I, I like to express myself mm. not just by talking about it, but I like mm-hmm. to write about it, man. And yeah. we we're just kind of like watching the Chappelle show. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, special. exactly. And we're just talking about like the freedom to express yourself. And yeah, like you, you, everybody has a chance to make a, uh, a impact, a voice, mm-hmm. big or small, mm-hmm. whatever. Right? You can mm-hmm. do something that that you know what I mean that I don't know, that's meaningful. You know yeah. What I mean? So I, I I I like to express myself that. So way. is it something you can see yourself just like putting more time into now? Because now, yeah, like yeah, I, I was gonna say, like now if you don't have a podcast to yeah. worry about, you can start focusing more on yourself, right? I think I'm. A, I think I convinced me, man. I I've been thinking about. it. I just yeah. haven't done it though. Like, yeah. you know what I mean, I just I don't know. I I feel like I I would like yeah. to do that. I would like to see like you know what I mean, because when you grow up in especially Atlanta, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. everybody wants to rap, right? But mm-hmm. I, I didn't like obviously that like, whatever. Everybody's a rapper. When I realized I saw people that could do it in a like Bona Muhammad, mm-hmm. people yeah. who could do it in a, in a more meaningful way, yeah. yeah, and and you could you could like present to like your family mm-hmm. and like events and stuff like that. I was like, I thought it was really cool. I, that mm-hmm. was inspiring yeah. to me. Yeah, and you never know if you could be that person for somebody else. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Not saying that you want to be famous doing it. It's just that mm-hmm. you can give somebody like. You know, inspiration. Yeah, you know what I mean. I might put up a couple of your pieces on there. Then maybe nah, I'll find I find that. If I come do up with some have new them ones, up? I'll, I'll, nah, I. Cause Cause I know so, people oh, yeah, there was, like, there was like I never took it seriously. I never yeah. like okay, I'm about to like I'm about to get this. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, like, I just that was my like it was free time. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, mean, I just feel like this is going on. I want to talk about this and just I'll just put some words together and then like a quick. It was like a low quality selfie yeah. video, right? There's nothing. <laughs> but it was authentic though. though. Exactly. Yeah, that was me expressing myself like a different, yeah. in a different way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, in a different way. You know what I mean? And I, I think I wanna I wanna I, I do wanna kind of go through that. And know? and and also uh, with the podcast like. Uh, if you don't have okay maybe Luz Marto is on like indefinite hiatus but do you feel like you might be able to expand and like make your own podcast maybe on what you yeah. specifically would like to yeah. talk about I would love to man I would love to man I feel like I enjoyed mm-hmm. doing it mm-hmm. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the feedback mm-hmm. that I mean somebody just reached out to me and said that they're about to get married because mm-hmm. of one of the events that we did right? oh, yeah. and they met somebody mm-hmm. right and I Man, that meant a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, did it, you get invited? We, like our <laughs> look, look, like what we did wasn't like it got. It didn't get a whole bunch of numbers. It didn't mm-hmm. get a whole bunch of views. Yeah, but it it, it meant something to us. Yeah. yeah, and people who listened to it, who liked it, it meant yeah. something to them too. Yeah, so kind of like you know what I mean? Like you forget that all those numbers is still one individual, yeah. right? They're yeah. all yeah. Like whenever you hear people talk about, oh, I only got like a thousand views. Oh, I only got like yeah. five hundred views. Like. That's literally like if you put out a show right there and you had five people, five hundred people in room, you'd be like, "Yo, this is like lit. Uh, this that, is something yeah. else, right?" I, I yeah. So we, I the numbers used to bother me a lot. Yeah, like, really? like, we're, not, we're not getting no impact. We're not, but then somebody told me it's like, if you go on live and you have four people watching, mm-hmm. that's a lot of people in a room with you. Yeah, four yeah. people. If you go somewhere with four people, like that's mm-hmm. a lot of human like interaction. Right? Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean, so you don't have to be. And at, like I said, the impact was more important, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the, the effect of it was more important. I feel mm-hmm. like if you're sincere yeah. and you really like just want something good from it, yeah. it can go further than you can ever imagine, right? And you yeah. might not see it. Yeah. You might not ever, mm-hmm. but it, you know what I mean? It could go like, it's just the energies out there and it could lead to other things, right? 
parents come up to us and tell us like, oh, I love this. I don't yeah, know what the kids good. was going through or yeah. talking about or how they think. Mm-hmm. I never knew that. Like literally parents would tell me like, I didn't know kids thought like this. Mm-hmm. So like, wow. and that was just because they were coming on and just be like, hey, we're going to tell you how we feel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that we as a community got to kind of figure out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and just because we don't have authentic dialogue, like yeah. real, real conversations. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So this was one of many platforms. Y'all have a platform. Like, mm-hmm. these are many avenues. Aisha mm-hmm. Haroon has her videos. Like, yeah. they're expressing and showing this is our state. This is us. This is how yeah. we look. This is how we are. You know what I mean? And people who, for some reason, never saw that side to us are like, mm-hmm. okay, I didn't know. Like, this is, mm-hmm. this is yeah, this is what's up. Oh, yeah. Man. It's definitely, like, a beautiful thing to be able to showcase your culture. And I talked about that when I was talking about, like, what motivated us to do the podcast. Yeah. It was the fact that we could showcase us as people like no one knows how these are but now there are you know on youtube is two thousand more people who know what a how yeah. person is mm-hmm. or like our listeners got a thousand ourselves. something we never documented ourselves we never we have so much history so much, we have so much about us that yeah we can, we can really, share. You know what i mean we've never been able to like kind of just put mm-hmm. it together and put it out you know what i mean yeah and i think and people underestimate like how much work goes into a podcast like mm-hmm. we and I'm sure you guys are the same. Like, there's no script that we're following. Yeah. Like, um, you really, I feel like being on the podcast, I don't know if it was the same for you guys, but it definitely kind of makes you more comfortable with a level of public speaking. Obviously, we don't have an audience in our studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think we're now cognizant of the fact that people are going to watch this. And, and I think for me, like, it was never really about the numbers because... I knew that we were starting from the ground up and if five people watched our video, then it's like, yeah. okay, like that's fine. You know, like I think what we focused on more was like our authenticity, consistency. Like we just wanted to be, remain true to ourselves. Like we never wanted to feel like if someone's watching you or listening to you, they're like, oh, that's so fake. Like that's not who they are in real <laughs> yeah, life, you know? Yeah. Like I, and I think that translates because when you get messages where people are like complete strangers that are like, I feel like I know you in a mirror or, yeah, you yeah. know, I feel like I'm sitting in the room talking with you guys. I contribute to the conversation. Like mm-hmm. that's how I know that we're staying true to ourselves. Like we're doing something right. It's and gotta be the best feeling. We're not the biggest, you know, thing in the world, but feeling, man. Mm-hmm. it is. And I think that, um, you know, as much as we love to have these conversations with people that we know, it's even better when we have conversations with people that we don't know. Cause they mm-hmm. have different perspectives. They didn't have the same upbringing. Like people who aren't, you know, Harari yeah. give us like their insight from their culture. Like so many different people have said, oh, you know, that episode we did with Hassan and we broke yeah. down like the um, cultural like wedding ceremonies. Like, yeah. So many different cultures have said, oh, yeah, like, you know, we have something similar. We do this. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think that um, with this platform, like us kind of not necessarily burying our souls but us being genuine and just on display yeah Yeah, on display is is the best that we can do and it's one form of i guess you know bringing the community together in a way oh yeah you know i don't think that we're necessarily like a harari centric podcast like we try to pull in different avenues i guess but um you know you guys did really great with that i think that Mm -hmm. you know even when we were coming up with the concept of the podcast like we wanted to leave that lane clear for you um because you did it so well and and Mm -hmm. there was no comparison you know what i mean so we were like that's like you guys are killing it in that avenue let's just try to do something different you know um so this is me hoping that Luz Marto comes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. But I, I, I think my biggest takeaway yeah. um, uh, for all, like, this whole project or just having these conversations was, mm-hmm. like, we, when we were growing up, I mean, being, like, first generation in America, there was a lot of barriers we didn't know that we were facing. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, there's a lot that we, we till we got older, we did not understand, like, we were facing this, yeah. right? There was a mm-hmm. lot of conversations I wish I could have had with my parents. Mm-hmm. Never had them. Mm-hmm. A lot of, I wish I could have had with my aunts, my uncles, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. For whatever reason. Yeah. We just couldn't have those conversations. We just didn't. You know, people, my peers, whatever, right? So these are the measures that we kind of took to, like, trying to get past those barriers and have authentic and real conversations and dialogues that kind of, you know what I mean, who knows, right, could bridge more gaps that we have that, that exist, right? Yeah, yeah that definitely. That was my thing, yeah. Maybe we should start having these parents on here that we're always yeah, I talking love, about. I, I, always, I would love that. I mean, I would love to see a conversation. it. I, mean, I would love to see it. I feel like yeah. we got to bribe our parents because do you know our moms? <laughs> yeah, I, know, right? I mean, there's a lot that, you know I mean? Yeah, like, there's have a you, ever, lot of, you know what it is, though? 
I think our parents' generation still have that, like, what are people going to say about us? Yeah, and that, you know? we talked about mm-hmm. it earlier, right? That's yeah. where we got it from. Right? Yeah, it's, exactly. It's been going on, right? It's a cycle, right? Like, mm-hmm. have you guys ever asked your parents, how was it? leaving ethiopia what what was the motiv- like what was the motivation to leaving there how was the experience getting <laughs> I mean, here like all that kind of stuff <laughs> what in their safety yeah but we've never gotten the details like i've gotten uh, most of the because i've asked the questions because i was just curious of mm-hmm. like the details mm-hmm. but how like have you ever asked your parents like what was the what was the process of getting here like what are the challenges you had and all that kind of stuff man yeah there, there's some some baggage there that they've <laughs> never been claimed i'll yeah. tell you that bro there's they don't open up, man. Would you ever yeah. have that conversation with your parents? I would love to. I would yeah. love to document. I would love for that to be just like they have amazing stories. Mm-hmm. Like they have the craziest stories. Like yeah. when they one on one, they might tell you. Yeah. yeah. They'll never really open up. You could truly, build. Right? You could build. I feel like you could build a whole other podcast yeah. just on hearing like immigrant stories. I would love to mm-hmm. hear that. There's some things that yeah. they never unresolved issues never yeah. mm-hmm. got past to this day, mm-hmm. and they don't even they don't even realize it, and they had an effect on us. Like yeah. I said, there's a barriers that we uh, had. I wish our parents kind of all went to therapy. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. I wish oh, that was man. part of the immigration process was like, let's put yeah, that honestly, out there. Yeah, honestly. And they have a lot to offer. They did yeah. some amazing, like, some things that I could not believe that were done. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think I could ever, ever do. Oh, yeah. When you hear yeah. the stories, it's crazy, man. I mean, let's just compare it for a second. If we, like, we're 29. Mm-hmm. When I think back to what what were my parents doing when they were 29? Hmm. <laughs> they bought a house. They yeah, had two kids. The mm-hmm. Third car. Or whatever, <laughs> I mean, <it's laughs> third child, man. Right. right. Like, paying everything off, bro. Times were obviously different then, but. You know, when we when we look at our parents, I think sometimes because we see them all the time, like we don't necessarily simplify or minimize their experiences. But it's just like, oh, yeah, that's just my mom, whatever. That's just my dad, you know. But when you like sit back and look at it from an objective point of view, like they've overcome and gone through so much that Mm -hmm. like sometimes do you ever sit there and you're like what would I do if I was like 15 and I had to escape yeah. my country? Bruh, I get so mad at these like independent films that get these awards. I'm like, yo, my parents had a better story. Like, yeah. I mean, I'd be like, yo, my parents had a way better story than this, yeah. man. If somebody yeah. told that story yeah. or any of our stories. I man. feel like once we start documenting these things, like mm-hmm. maybe that will shed more light. I'm scared and because we might be too late because our sources might be, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like they might be, they're getting older, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, I mean, you know what? It might be hearing a few different podcasts from us soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know saying, right? Yeah, because it definitely on. sparked an idea there. <laughs> but but I, I feel like you're not done with podcasting, though. I feel there's just something Probably coming not, from yeah. you, man. Yeah. yeah it, Appreciate it, that. When yeah. I say indefinite hiatus, I mean like, you know, sooner and later. I'm just saying. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> you, you don't want to like box him into just like one project right like he oh no i'm talking about oh, yeah. like anything you know? like yeah anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i appreciate yeah. it no, i appreciate that i appreciate mm-hmm. it because i because i want to hear from you guys right because like i feel like we're one side we're from canada we yeah. have one perspective i know right but <laughs> i need to hear i need to hear perspective from you guys right like what's going on in america all the time what's what's your day to days like you know what Man. what's on your minds like <laughs> what we find interesting may be different from what you guys find interesting right yeah, no, I, I mean, like, I don't know, man. That's, I, I, I like the idea. I yeah. like the idea. It'll, bring, I mean, it'll bridge be the fun, gap man. between our we, we need a representative from every country. Just come yeah. together, right? Just come together and be like, <laughs> yo, mm-hmm. man. You know the, um, the what's that thing? The G some what is it called? Oh, the G twenty summit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we need. We need like one from each like major. <laughs> we just city. came. We just came full circle. We're like, let's make a kubba. <laughs> yeah, <I know>, right. <laughs> Back to square one. Exactly. <laughs> the parents had the right idea. We're just gonna yeah. refine it all. No, but oh. I really do feel. Do you feel like there's there's a br- bridge that needs to be, not bridge. What am I talking a gap about? Gap that needs to. There's be a bridge. gap that needs to be filled now with the um, like Canadians and Americans and just Europeans in general. Like, do you yeah, feel like we're more a, disconnected now? Because you know we we mentioned that I feel like we're living in a multiverse, man. We just there's a <laughs> lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of things that need to be uh, figured out. Man. Yeah, a lot mm-hmm. of not just gaps, but mm-hmm. everything Br- like yeah. bridges. Everything needs to be like. I mean, I don't know where yeah. to start. Hopefully, we can start that w- with this podcast and you guys. You know, <laughs> you making uh, expanding on your podcast and everything. And this and episode might be the one. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be interested in future episodes. Like, what do you think needs to be worked on, or what yeah. ideas that we come with as far as like? You clearly, have on. a lot like to more to say, and we have <laughs> ideas to say. It, you I know? know, maybe yeah. we can force them out of retirement. Yeah. <laughs> do another collab on there. Yeah, uh, we'll platform. talk after this. Don't we'll worry. <laughs> appreciate you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you know, but Adil has like an honorary Canadian citizenship, so he'll be uh, back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this isn't his only uh, feature on yeah. our channel. He'll be back. Yeah, I mean, it might just be that 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 
Oh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. That's guy. <laughs> okay, guys, we're, <laughs> we're losing trains of thoughts yeah, my here. my bad, my bad. You know, it's really, by the way, it's like really late at night, almost midnight here, so. Uh, it's 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, shoot. Okay, it's almost midnight, 11. <laughs> it's like when your parents say, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a 12 Round o'clock, up. when you look at the clock, it's like 11.05 or whatever. Round like, up, what? <laughs> That's, I, but, never yeah. thought, I never thought I'd get to that point, man. That's where I'm at right <laughs> now, man. Well, yeah, thank you again for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow uh adil on all his instagram i'll put it up here somewhere put it up on him the old the old i don't the even know why yeah it's the theologian yeah. on instagram uh i keep looking at the the, the what do you I call know, it you're looking the here. sound bar right. also guys do yourself a favor if you haven't already checked out loose mud doll i'm pretty sure the episodes are still <laughs> oh yeah definitely go like, through their catalog you don't understand how entertaining these episodes were and yeah. how insightful they are so go do yourself a favor and when they see the numbers they're gonna be motivated to <laughs> yeah <laughs> go listen okay, to sure them job, leave, uh, leave a we're, comment we're a, of motivation mom and pop shop we're just trying to small, small <laughs> business trying to stay afloat man. <laughs> this is all a ruse just to get them to come back from hiatus. <laughs> i know this is our secret so plan this is time, man. yeah <laughs> to the loose marto team we'll yeah, see y'all exactly. soon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate y'all for having us on it was fun man yeah, I, I enjoyed this man yeah of course thank you for coming on yes man. okay guys thank you oh wait sorry were you about to say something there the cousin connection oh we don't end with that my bad my bad when we end it we just say bye at the bye. same time okay guys <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs>